Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining um, the session for UI automation in one office. Um, and thank you for um, joining the DevCon and being with us uh, for this session and the others. Um, so in today's talk, we are going to talk about uh, UI automation and how we can leverage object repository with modern design experience, as well as some of the ways to um, reuse these objects and in, in decrease the implementation timelines. Um, that said, um, I am Alp Ugrai, and I'm leading the UI path practice in the Americas uh, at Site Digital Services. And I'm also one of the UI path MVPs um, this year as well as uh, last year. Um, and I'm very happy to have you guys on this session. And uh, nice to meet you all. Um, to get started, um, the object repository is a new way to do UI automation. Uh, the UI pad is available in version 2020.10 in Studio. It allows us to manage the objects in a centralized location with UI descriptives, store them um, either in UI libraries locally or in the orchestrator, and then at later stage, reuse these selectors um, in our workflows in, a, in different versions. So this will 100% increase the development timelines for any team that is right working uh, together by orchestrator or locally. So what does this allow? So it allows us to manage the descriptors for applications, screens, and elements, it allows us to drag these descriptors um, from the object repository and drop them into our workflows at, uh, at use. And we will be able to view all the UI activities that are used to uh, use in different object repositories, as well as different workflows. We can add them to snippets to reuse them or extract them as UI libraries. Uh, but we will also be able to access these objects as dependencies to our current project. So if anyone changes these um, objects in the, from the orchestrator or the locally, then it will also help our current workflow. And uh, we wouldn't have to maintain if you're using the same application in a different process. Um, so how does this look like? So we have the UI descriptor library on the left, and we have the UI activity library on the right. Um, on the left, you can see um, we have the Google Chrome application, CoinDesk, and we have the Google Chrome again and the Twitter app. Um, what this allows us is that we can define each button, the input. Uh, if you're extracting a data table, we can define that. If there's a link that we need to click, such as a CSV link or export as a file link, we can also define that and automatically recognize uh, if it is a button or a link and such. Um, similarly, in the Twitter app, you'll be able to go to the search bar and write whoever's uh, name tag you like, and then start searching and then extract the tweet that we need. Um, it's, it's very convenient. And um, at the right corner, the, the little blue arrow pretty much indicate that we can export this, um, this descriptor as a library to be used at a later stage. So when it comes to on the right, we have the activity library, we have the different applications, and we have where we use these UI descriptors in the workflow. And then we can take these activities and export them as well as snippets and use in other workflows as well, which adds even more reusability in our workflows. Um, so how does this look like? This is a generic view um, of, of a calculator app where we have the buttons and such, um, and, and, and the UI at, uh, libraries that shows the calculator's elements. So we have the click, uh, click to, click add, equals, get result, um, and it helps us to pretty much, again, use the library uh, within our workflow within the new modern design. Um, so this is an example of how we can also find the references elsewhere. So if one of these um, UI descriptors is used in my workflow, but also it has been used across the organization, uh, it's in our COE, everyone will be able to see in which sequence, which main project that is used so that you will be aware um, the impact that you do if you change one thing. Um, you can also have multiple versions 
So if you want to use a prior version um, of, um, of an element, then you may, you may be able to leverage that. And you can use, reuse um, these uh, elements to orchestrate a worker or even through Azure DevOps and store them there and then install them on your machine. Um, so this, this is an example of the, the DevCon demo that we wanted to showcase to you that you would pretty much, all you have to do is to choose a descriptor, in this case, an input um, or any other case in button, and you can just drag it to the left where it says drop, drop, drop here or over plus sign. Um, and then it will automatically sync that activity with the selector that we need. And it, it, it's much more convenient rather than trying to go over the selector again and making sure that the HTML code is stable. You will know that it is already stable because the, the descriptor repository is already well tested. So what we will show in this demo process is pretty much how does a tweet impact price? So we will go to Twitter. We are going to go to Elon Musk's profile. We'll extract some of his tweets. And then we're going to go to Coindex and extract the latest price of Dogecoin, everyone's favorite. And then we're going to run a sentiment analysis using AI Center and then showcase what was the start price and end price and what was the tweet, what was the sentiment um, in Elon Musk's tweet that specific day. And throughout this, we're going to use AI Center, but we are also going to leverage all the UI descriptors that you see on the right hand side um, within our workflow to allow the rest of the organization or any other project use case to reuse this um, for, uh, for their own uh, purposes. So we will go over the object repository. We will capture UI elements and define some anchors. We're going to export the UI library locally and then to the orchestrator. And then we're going to do a um, case where we import the descriptor into a local activity and then move with that in the showcase uh, pretty much what the result is. So I'll move forward with the, with the demo right now. So now we can jump into the demo. And as we discussed, we're going to go over to Twitter and do some activities, extract data, and then to Coindesk and navigate, input some dates, and then click on um, the buttons and then download the CSV file, read that, and we'll go over each tweet, run an ML skill with the sentiment analyzer using Facebook's open source model, and then we are going to show and print uh, pretty much the result of that. Um, so that said, now we have on the right hand side our project UI descriptors. We have the Chrome, the button, input, the export data, link CSV already prepared and done. We have the tweets table to extract the tweet as a table. And then we have our UI library that's already locally exported um, into our project. Um, that said, let's go over to one of these and then check the multiple options that we have. We can click edit element, we can change the element's name, we can extract metadata or change the descriptor. Um, we can uh, define the type, whether that's a screen or an element. We can add a description, um, and, we, and this will allow us much more flexibility to later change um, the, each of these descriptors. Now let's go to edit descriptor and visualize how the code looks like. We have the image of the anchor in the initial place. We have the anchor is an image. We can increase the accuracy, make it better or less. And we can increase the accuracy of the fuzzy selector. We can add the selector as well from the prior uh, methods. And um, this will show, showcase pretty much how we can um, easily change uh, a selector or now the descriptor um, much easier. Um, so let's go over um, the process now um, and start the um, use case by clicking the coin desk. And it's already initiate a browser extension and it will already connect to the Chrome, uh, Chrome to UI path, which makes it much easier um, compared to the previous method uh, and modern design. But this is where we want to go. We want to go to the price slash Dogecoin 
and we want to take a look at the price here. Um, so now we, we can create a new element and then pretty much see how um, it will look like and integrate into our rest of the descriptors. Now we click on indicate limit and it syncs with the Chrome and then now installs pretty much the, the, the descriptors and the HTML code and makes the connection between Studio and the Chrome. So now we can mark our uh, original target, which is Dogecoin, and then now we're searching uh, target for selectors um, under fuzzy selectors. And then at the later stage, then we will check the anchor that we need. So now we choose our anchor. It's collecting the anchor's information. And on the right, you can see the image Dogecoin. You can see the fuzzy selector, the window selector, and all the other details we have. You can increase the accuracy of the image that will improve the, the anchor. We can change the selector here to make it uh, perhaps more stable and get rid of the, some of the uh, body elements. So now we select and it already showed up in, uh, in the add an element option. So now let's find an element name and let's call it um, crypto name. And let's save this element and let her use it within our workflow to pull which coin we are at. If, if we were to use any other um, Cryptocurrency will be able to do that. If you use the capture element, it also automatically shows button input um, type of words, uh, which makes it much easier to name um, name each of the element and makes it um, easier to also recognize how you want to use it. Um, so now we save our element. Let's extract this package that we updated now contains more elements. And let's create a library with that. Now let's go ahead and open our library. Now we're restoring the dependencies. We'll be able to change and edit or remove the dependencies within these libraries. So you can get rid of some of the things that you don't need that's specific to this library, that if you are not interacting with web, maybe you do not need some of the functionalities. If you do not interact with Excel, maybe you don't need Excel, Excel packages uh, dependencies already installed on this one. So now we have um, created our, our library, which is called Chrome Coin Desk. And this contains all the information that we need uh, from the Coin Desk application, including the new one we created, crypto name. We have the objects, we have different dependencies, and we have the name of the application. So let's go ahead and remove the Twitter one from here. Let's remove the OCR one since we do not use it as well. So in a, in a normal scenario, we would go ahead and choose uh, only the ones that we need. So in this case, would be UI path, UI automation activities. If you're dealing with any other descriptor uh, for your object repository, um, if it is for document understanding or if it is for anything else, then you would need to have those dependencies. So now, uh, we got rid of the things we don't need and let's publish it. We can have two options. We can choose um, to do it, send it to orchestrator, or we can choose to send it to a custom location um, in, in, in our local folder or anything else. We can choose actually even Azure DevOps here and define the root cut categories that we need. So let's continue okay, and publish it. You can also change the image of this package as well, if you like. And so now we have Chrome Coin Desk Descriptor published in our local repository under libraries. So let's go ahead to manage packages. Let's go to libraries. And I have my Chrome Twitter app and Chrome Coin Desk Descriptors application ready. So anyone who has this package locally or in the orchestrator or Azure doubles will be able to just install it into their process and use it at their will. Now let's go back to the DevCon demo process. And let's use 
our crypto name um, within the workflow. So let's install the dependencies that we need. And let's click on the main workflow. And to our sequence. And we would like to now go to um, to the application browser for CoinDesk and add an activity get text. And we can go to our repository now and choose the element that he created crypto name, drag and drop to this place. And it already popped up with the initial location and dodge as its anchor. And we want to save it to a variable so that we can use it at a later stage. So let's call it crypto name. Yeah, and save it as a string. Now let's go to edit descriptor. And this will allow us to change if you need to, and it already shows it in the Chrome. So it's, um, it's able to sync it again. So now we have um, some of the items, one is in the local project descriptors and one in the libraries. Ideally, you would have one or the other, so some of the elements do not clash with each other. Um, so now, um, the other option that you can have is, let's go to Twitter app, tweet apps, we can extract metadata, we can edit the descriptor, we can remove some of them, and let's go ahead and extract the full package for the library as well. So you can have the bolt in one place too. Instead of having one. So, so now I have this version already installed, it's called Twitter apps, but I would like to uninstall it and use the one that I have locally. And in this case, I won't be depending on the AI libraries, but you, if you're using the orchestrator base or locally base, you will have the UI library and you wouldn't have the one that's in the project UI descriptor. Otherwise, certain elements, if they are the same and used in the same activity, they will crash or clash. So let's go ahead and hit play and now kick off the process. So what the process is going to do is quite simple. It's going to go to the Twitter uh, with a specific handle Elon Musk, and we are going to extract each of the tweets as a data table. So now we are launching, and it's quite fast to extract as a table. And once we extract, each tweet into the data table under the column named tweet. We will then move forward to the coin best stage. So now in coin desk, we can go ahead and change the date um, as 23rd, and then we wanted to make it to 24th. And this is all robot acting and seeing the anchor, as well as the initial place. And it's already sold the Dogecoin as well. So now we go to export data, hit CSV, and we installed it um, as a CSV file. And the automation will pretty much now go ahead and read the CSV file, extract the data, go through each of the tweets and run the AI center 
machine learning model that Facebook has and showcase our closing price, open price, and sentiment in a message box like this. Uh, so now let's go ahead and go back to UiPath Studio so that we can go over the logs to see what happened. So as you can see, it shows like how much is that large window where if you'd like to develop, please submit ideas. Confidence narrow, someone suggested changing fees, which is awesome. And it shows it's very positive with the confidence score 75. And how much is that dodge in the window? It's quite natural. So this is pretty much a good example of how we used an application uh, like Google Chrome and created two UI descriptors per website. If you wanted to create more applications, we will go capture element, hit add application, or start recording, and we'll automatically um, add that within our object repository for ease of use. And that said, that's uh, in our demo, you can create different use cases. Um, we used in each of the activities our UI descriptors, and so everything was synced. If we want to update these descriptors at a later on and use a different one, we can again just drag and drop or update the UI descriptor um, that will impact all projects. We use the sentiment analyzer with the row and the JSON output. Um, so the ML still helped out here as well. And it's a good showcase of um, integration between UI descriptor, the studio, AI center, going through two websites under one application. And if we would need to export the data that we collected and input it to another place like Oracle, SAP, and such in any use case, then we would be able to add and create its UI descriptor right here and publish it as a library so the entire organization will be able to um, run a workflow like this one. Um, so this is just a use case. Feel free to use it uh, in any other context. Um, thank you very much for joining this session. I hope you guys learned a little bit of how um, the descriptors can be used and um, how we incre it increases the implementation timelines. Also a little bit of how AI Center uh, can be used for a mock um, machine learning model here um, that we use from open source. Um, so that said, um, thank you very much for joining this session. And I'm uh, looking forward to for hear your feedback. Feel free to reach out. Uh, ping me on LinkedIn. I'll be happy to connect. That's it. I'll, um, I'll, I'll see you guys later. Thank you.